Hello dear students, how are you all? Welcome to One Page Biology. This is Praful and I hope you all are doing fine. In today's video, I will be discussing another very beautiful topic which is part of unit number 7, Genetics and Evolution of 12th Standard NCRT Biology. Dear student, from this particular unit, we have a chapter which is known as Principles of Inheritance and Variation. This is chapter number 5 of unit number 7. So from this chapter, basically today we are going to discuss a topic which is nothing but what is the difference between dominance and recessive. From this topic, there might be a question which can come in your CBSC 12th standard board examination. And this question can be a question like difference between dominance and recessive. It can be a four marker question. So dear students, are you all ready to understand the difference between dominance and recessive? So let's begin with the video dear students. Before actually understanding the concept of dominance and recessives, let's go back to the 18th century. My question to you all is, do you all know the scientist who came out with the principles of inheritance? Do you all know the scientist who actually came out with the first initial laws of genetics? Yes dear students, I'm pretty sure that you must be knowing the answer. The answer is nothing but the great Gregor Johann Mendel. Dear students, he is known as the father of genetics and he also got the Nobel Prize for the same. Now dear students, Gregor Johann Mendel basically conducted certain experiments which were famously called as the hybridization experiments on garden pea plant. From these experiments, he had made certain laws which are famously known as the laws of inheritance or we also call it as the principles of inheritance. So since we need to know what is the difference between dominance and recessive, let's try to understand what exactly Gregor Johann Mendel did in his experiment. As we all know that Mendel had performed certain cross-pollinations. Now he had done the cross-pollination with the help of garden pea plant. Remember dear students, the scientific name of this particular plant is nothing but Pisum sativum. When he had done the cross-pollination between garden pea plant, he had got certain observations. In this particular slide, you can see a cross which is done between a tall and a dwarf garden pea plant. So basically, dear students, when Mendel had performed a cross between a tall and a dwarf garden pea plant, what did he get in the F1 generation? What do we mean by F1 generation over here? F1 generation is the first generation which is formed after the cross between the parents. So here in the F1 generation, what kind of results did he get? Dear students, he was surprised to see that all the F1 generation plants were tall. Again, he wanted to know that what will happen if we do a cross between the F1 plants also. So what he did was he allowed the F1 plants to undergo self-pollination. And what did he get in the F2 generation? Now in the F2 generation, he was actually very surprised to see that out of all the plants, actually 75% of the plants in the F2 generations were tall and 25% of the plants in the F2 generation were dwarf. That means if you talk in terms of the ratio, out of the four plants, three were tall and one was dwarf. So what is the ratio of tallness to dwarfness? It is actually nothing but three is to one. So dear students, this was nothing but the monohybrid ratio or which is also famously called as the phenotypic ratio. Now dear students, we need to understand something over here. See in the F1 generation, all the plants were tall. Mendel considered that these tall plants basically must be having a recessive allele also. Uh, that means he had considered that these tall plants must be having somewhere a recessive factor also. And that's the reason why, dear students, in the F2 generation, we were getting some of the plants which were dwarf plants. Basically, the character which had appeared in the F1 generation was tall plants. Now, let us assume something over here. Let's say that capital T was the symbol which was given for tallness. And accordingly, small letter that is small t was the symbol which was given for dwarfness. Here, the symbols capital T capital T or capital T small t or small t small t these are all the genotypes of the plant they are also known as the genetic representation of a particular character at the same time tallness or dwarfness these are nothing but the phenotypes of the plant 
that's why dear students the phenotypes are also called as the external features of a particular organism so dear students what mendel had actually concluded was in the f1 generation the plants can be either capital t capital t or it can be capital t small t that means the plants with the alleles either capital t capital t or capital t small t are actually the same in appearance that means even capital t capital t will be a tall plant or capital t small t will be a tall plant only whenever a particular character has a pair of dissimilar alleles always one factor will dominate the other factor so in this particular case as we said that whenever the plant is capital t small t the capital t will be dominant over small t and hence the plant is going to be tall like this mendel had performed cross pollination by considering all the different seven contrasting characters and in all the characters we found that one character was always dominant over the other character and that's why he called these characters as the contrasting characters so i hope you have understood the concept of dominance and recessive dear students from this particular video if you have any doubts or suggestions please put it in the comment section i'll be seeing you all in the next video with some another biology related concept dear students till that time this is praful signing off see you all in the next video dear students thank you so much bye bye